as everybody has their eyes on the University of Pennsylvania, there is a new chorus of voices calling for the University of Pennsylvania's president, Liz McGill, to step down. Joining that chorus, the board of advisors at UPenn's Wharton Business School and former U.S. ambassador and Penn alum, John Huntsman. It's part of the significant backlash to her congressional testimony this week, as well as from the presidents of Harvard and MIT on the subject of anti-Semitism on campus. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I, I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision. Well, the university released a clarification message from McGill the day after the <clears throat> hearing. Listen. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been, the irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. Joining us now is the president of Wesleyan University, Michael Roth. Uh, president Roth, we, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, yes, you have the had, answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, that, that actually, your school has had a very different experience, I think, than some of these universities. I want to get into why in a moment. But to start with, as a university president, if you're in that chair, what are you answering there? Yes, of course it's a violation of then our why rules. why didn't they? I, I think at, by this time in the uh, hearing, and I'd watched only some of it, and I didn't watch all four hours, but in, by this time in the hearing, the, the, the segue was from if someone yells inf intifada, if someone calls for the end of the occupation, and then it became if someone calls for the genocide of Jews. That was, a, that was a line of, of Congressman Stefanik, who has a long history of promoting white nationalism and Islamophobia, no friend of anti-Semites. Anti but they were going down this slope. How, what could you say? If somebody says, I want all Jewish people dead, they should be removed from campus. If someone says, I want all Armenians dead or all black people, I, I mean, it's just, it's very obvious to me that that creates an environment that's not safe enough to learn in. You know, we have to respect free speech, and almost all the time, that's our default position. But, but sometimes it leads to intimidation and violence. That's right. And you're exactly right to point out the line that there is in the First Amendment. The, the First Amendment is not without limit. And she, she was pointing, even in the clarification, they're pointing to that, the First Amendment, but it's inciting violence. That is the line where That's it right. is not accepted. That's right. And over the last several years, and many commentators have pointed out, people at colleges and universities have said something is violent when it's really just offensive. And it's important that we say, you don't have the right not to be offended. So on my campus, there are people saying, uh, Roth, you support genocide because we support the right of Israel to defend itself. Now, I'm offended by them saying I support genocide. I think they're wrong, mm -hmm. but I can't, I don't want to try to censor that. However, if they said I'm in favor of genocide, I have never heard anyone say that on our, any campus, then we would take disciplinary action against them. I think you make a really important point here. This isn't happening in isolation. It's not happening in a vacuum. It's not happening just because of October 7th. What universities have done and their posture on specific language and how people have spoken and acted in the years leading up to now created this moment. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think there's, it's, it's not just universities. I mean, I, my students have said to me, I don't feel safe on campus. Muslim students have said that because they say, everyone thinks I'm a terrorist. Uh, Jewish students have said, I don't feel safe on campus. And I, my response to them is, I'm, I'm sorry you don't feel that way, but I think you're safer here on our campus than anywhere else in America. I mean, there is anti-Semitism, not just on college campuses. You know, we walk out, even here in New York City, mm -hmm. there's anti-Semitism. Of course, as a Jew, I know that. On campus, my job is to make sure it's safe enough so people can learn, despite prejudices that other people may have. And at most colleges and universities, the ones I know best, that spirit of openness and wanting to learn from people with different points of view is really there. There's also occasionally, and this is probably what you were referring to, this, this tendency towards parochialism to say, oh, I can't listen to you because you don't belong to my identity group. There's some of that, but as teachers, we push back against that. We don't let that rule the day. 
You wrote a really interesting piece a couple of weeks ago for Slate, and the headline is, My students wanted to talk Israel-Palestine. Here's what we did instead. What did you do? So we, uh, this is a great books course. It's called The Modern and the Postmodern. And that week we were reading Sigmund Freud's Civilization and Discontents. You know, this is not the kind of book they normally jump into with gusto. But Freud is writing about scapegoating. He's writing about the, uh, the tendency of violence to erupt, even when things look like they've made great progress. And of course, in the middle of this conflict in the Middle East, these questions of scapegoating, of, of needing an enemy that you demonize, of the, the, the ineradicability of violence, there it was on everyone's mind. But instead of just saying, well, my opinion about Israel is X, or my opinion about Palestine is Y, we were going through a careful, uh, not uncontroversial book that understand these issues more broadly. My job as a teacher is not to try to convince people to share my view about Israel. My job as a teacher is to help them understand the issues better, and they all seem to want to do that. Do you think the pendulum will swing back? You mentioned it's not every institution, probably more than we have actually realize are having the same type of dialogue uh, and conversation that you would expect on a university campus. But for those where that wasn't the case, and this has become a real problem in the last several weeks that everybody's noticed, yes. is the pendulum going to swing back the other way? I, I, I really hope so. We have to defend free speech, but we have to have safe enough environments in which people can learn by talking to other people who don't agree with them. In America, we've gotten very good at finding people who agree with us and having conversations with them. We have to remember how to have conversations with people who don't agree with us, because we might be wrong, we might learn something, and of course, that's what colleges should be about. This has been a great conversation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, it's President really Michael Roth, you. Wesleyan University. We appreciate your time. Out front now, the former Democratic Senator Al Franken. Senator, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but obviously uh, this, this has become a storm. So um, you're a Harvard graduate. Mm -hmm. You're also Jewish. Uh, so you, you, you look at this from two different perspectives, very relevant to what they're talking about. Do you think that the president of Harvard, as well as the presidents of, of MIT and UPenn, should resign or be fired over what we heard? I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, I know that they didn't... I believe in free speech because I'm... The comedian too, yeah, and uh, yeah. but um, you know, if you're calling for the genocide of entire people, I think that requires disciplinary action. There are a lot of people in this country, Palestinians and Jews, who are afraid. Yes. And um, calling for a genocide now, Intifada, maybe I think students at Harvard, MIT, and Penn. May see no. that differently. Uh, no, they, they, I think they know what Intifada is, and that is calling for the killing of civilians, and they've had some Intifadas, and that's what they, what mm -hmm. they do. So I think they know what that is, and that yes. calls for disciplinary action. So, so, you know, it's interesting, the context here, and we'll see what happens in these cases. Um, the, Ross Stevens is a UPenn donor, $100 million donor. Mm -hmm. He's come out and said, I'm going to pull all the money if you don't fire the president of UPenn. So then that adds another thing in. Do you do, you do yep. something like that? Because you've got someone with a lot of money saying, do it or else, and basically, uh, you know, they've got the gun to your head? He puts uh, her in, in a funny position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean and this the is board, tough, right? And the I mean, board, uh, too. I mean, the, the board members, uh, other board members, yeah, that, that puts them in, in, him saying that puts them in an odd position. So is it, I mean, and I, I mean, I know who knows how you, but it is tough. I mean, it's almost like, okay, do you do, you do what a big donor wants to do? Or do you say that no, because we're not going to do, we're not going to be at the bidding of big donors. We're going to do what we want and we try to try to chart your the own course The donor could have way. kept that, could have told other people without announcing that. Right, kept yeah. it private. Yes, because then you put them in, in the position of, oh, I see, big donors, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, call the shots there and, and you don't not, want that, right? Not what's right or wrong. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to see how this is going to play out. I mean, because all of these layers, obviously, are, are so important. 